when they give you an equation like this, you should always look to see that they haven't maybe given you the x-intercepts. Because if they give you the x-intercepts, then you could use the bracket method, which I'm sure you've seen in some of the videos already. But in this one, they haven't given us the three x-intercepts. They've just given us random points. And so what we do in a situation like this, it's very easy, it just takes a bit of time, is we go and plug the points into the correct equation. So they tell us here that when x is 2, then y is 0 for the original equation. So I'm going to take that original equation and make the x, I mean the y value is 0. Then I'm going to go a and then 2 plus b and then it's a 2 again. And then I'm just going to neaten up. So that's going to be 8a plus 4b plus 2c plus d. There's nothing further that we can do there, so we stop. So we know we've used that one. Then we just go to this one. So this is the first derivative. So we go back to this original and we find the first derivative, which would be 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. We then plug in x as minus 2 and the answer should be an 8. So we say 8 equals to 3a, then in brackets for the x part only. And then we can neaten up and that's eventually going to give us 12a minus 4b plus c. Okay, so all the important equations that we come up with, I'm just going to place them over there for use later, or to use later, should I say. Now, this one is the second derivative. So we go from the first derivative and we go one step further. So that's going to be 6ax plus 2b. Then they're telling us that the answer is a 1 when x is 1. So that's 1 equals to 6a times 1 plus 2b. I'm just going to neaten up a bit. Okay, there we go. We've used this one, this one, and this one. Now we can use the second derivative again. So they're telling us, so we go back to this one and we say that the answer is a four when x is a two. And then I'm just gonna simplify. And that's it. All right, guys, now from here, it's quite easy. What we do is we take these two equations, which we got from the second derivative, and we solve simultaneously. Now you guys know how to solve simultaneously, so I'm just gonna, quickly do that one. I'm going to take this equation over here and I'm going to divide everything by 2 and so that's going to be 2 equals to 6a plus b. I'm going to get b alone, 2 minus 6a. Then I'm going to take that b value and I'm going to place it into this b over here and so that's going to give us 1 equals to 6a plus 2 bracket 2 minus 6a. Then going to neaten and multiply this all up, 4 minus 12a. Then going to solve for a so that's eventually going to give us 6a is equal to 3. And so a is quite a weird answer. a will be a half. We can then plug that into this equation. So that will be b equals to 2 minus 6 times a half. And so b would eventually equal to negative 1. Now what we do, if we have a and b, we go one step uh, we go one step back to the first derivative equation that we had. And so we can say 8 is equal to 12 times a half minus 4 times minus 1, which is our b value, plus c. And so that's going to be 8 is equal to 6 plus 4 plus c. And so c should be negative 2. Then what we do is we go one step back again. And so that's going to take us to this equation. So we can say 0 is equal to 8 times a half, because that's our a value, plus 4 times minus 1, plus 2 times minus 2, plus d. And so that's going to be 0 is equal to, sorry, that's minus 1. It looks like a 7. So that's going to be minus 4, minus 4, plus d. And so if you solve that, d would be 4. And so there we've done it, guys. We've got everything. And so f of x is going to be equal to a half x cubed minus 1x squared minus 2x plus 4.